everybody! Today we're going to build a fully functional Python app from scratch. We're going to build a graphic user interface with Kinter where we'll extract text out of PDF files. And this time we are not going to use Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook. We are finally using a proper code editing software. So if you guys don't have one just yet, I highly recommend getting Atom because it's 100% free and that's the software I'll be using for this lesson. So this tutorial is perfect for intermediate developers and beginners because the only three modules we'll be using are PyPDF2, Tkinter, and Pillow. And that's it. So you can imagine that this is not a very difficult project, but it sure is handy. And before we begin, make sure you guys download the starter files from the description of the video. And these files will include a PNG logo and two different PDF files, which we'll use to test our program. And if you guys are ready, you can go ahead and open your favorite code editor. Um, and as you can see, I already have Atom opened. Um, and we'll start a brand new file with file, new file. And I'm gonna close the rest of these tabs because they are annoying and I don't need them at all. And we're going to start from importing the three different modules we'll be using for our app. So the first one would be Tkinter. So import Tkinter as TK. The second one would be PyPDF2. So import PyPDF2. And lastly, we are going to import Pillow because we would like to include a logo. So we need a module to process our images. So from Pill, aka pillow import image and image tk which is a kinter image okay and once we are ready we can save this as a python file we'll just go to save as and we will navigate to the exact same folder where we saved our starter files so i'm just going to copy the url and i'm going to name this file app dot p y so once we hit save we can see a pop of color in our code which is exactly what we were looking for but how do we access this file from our terminal let's quickly add a print statement so print is this working and save the file with Control s and let's go ahead and open our terminal in my case that would be anaconda because i've used anaconda to um to install my python and since I'm using Anaconda, I'll need to activate my environment. So activate main. But the next step is relevant to all terminals. So what we're going to do is we're going to access the exact same folder where we saved our Python file. And we'll do this with CD, which is current directory. And in my case, that would be documents, Python. You will probably have a different folder make sure that you're in the exact same folder you need. So I actually skipped one folder. So let's do CD once again, current directory, Kinter. And once we reach the desired folder, we are going to type Python and then the name of our file, which is app.py, hit enter. And you can see that our print statement was printed into the terminal, which means that our file is working. So first we'll create a window object, which will hold all the future elements of our interface. For this, we will need to get rid of the print statement and we'll simply type root equals TK dot TK with a capital T this time and closing brackets. So this command indicates the beginning of our interface, but we will also need an end command. And this command would be root dot main loop. So basically all the elements we are going to create will be within these two lines of code. If we'll try to create them above the root command or below the main loop command, these elements will not appear inside your window object because they are outside of it. So let's go ahead and save this file with control S and we'll try to rerun it again inside our terminal. And here we don't really need to type anything. We'll just hit on the up arrow, which will present us with the most recent command we typed. And then we hit enter and we get to see our window object, but this window is way too small for my app. So let's enlarge it with the help of the canvas command. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this window. And once we do that, we can see that our terminal becomes available again. And we'll go back to our code 
and create a brand new variable which we'll call canvas. We will set this variable to tk.canvas with a capital C and inside the round brackets the first parameter is root which is our window object and then the second parameter would be width uh, which I will set as 600 and height which I'll set to uh, 300. Sounds like a good number. And in order to initialize this canvas object, we are going to type canvas.grid. And I think I'm gonna go for a three column design and we can do this by uh, specifying column span equals three. So this attribute is basically going to split our canvas into three identical invisible columns where we can place all our elements with a lot of precision. And if we save this with Control S, and we will rerun our terminal again, so the up arrow and enter, we can see that our canvas is larger and is in fact 600 pixels by 300 pixels, so we can move on with placing our logo. First, I'm going to load our logo as a pillow image. For this, I'll create a new comment, logo, and I'll create a new variable, also logo, which will equal to image with a capital I dot open, and inside the round brackets, we will specify the URL of our image. In my case, it's going to be um, simply logo.png because my app file is in the exact same folder as my logo, okay? So let's just type it here. Then we are going to convert this pillow image into a Tkinter image, and we'll do this by typing logo equals image tk in camel case dot photo image, and inside the round bracket we are going to call our logo variable. And now we are going to place this image inside a label widget. So in the next line we are going to type logo label equals tk dot label with a capital L again and inside the round brackets we'll say image equals logo but in order for this to work we will need to add another command so in the next line we'll type logo label dot image equals to logo and even though it looks like we're just paraphrasing the code from above you cannot skip this line of code, it is absolutely necessary. And the last thing we'll do in regards to our logo is place it inside our window object. So we can do this with grid again. We'll type logo label dot grid and inside the round brackets we'll set the column to be one, which is our center column and the row to be zero, which is our first row. Okay, and once we're ready, we'll save this file, we'll go back to our terminal, we'll hit the up arrow and enter. And of course I have a typo. So let's just go back to our code and say column and not column, okay? Save it again and rerun it. Oh wow, what a beautiful logo. Good job, Maria, good job. And once I'm done patting myself on the shoulder, it's time to add some instructions to our app. And again, we are going to use a label widget for that. So let's create a brand new comment, instructions. And underneath, we'll create a variable, also instructions. And we are going to set it to tk.label with a capital L. And the first parameter is always the root folder. And the second parameter would be text. Okay, so our text will say, select a PDF file on your computer to extract all its text. And if you guys are just as picky as I am, you can select your favorite font. So you can type font equals, and then any font you have on your computer is going to work here. So I'm gonna go for railway, which is my favorite font, and I'm going to place this label on my grid in the next line. So we'll type instructions.grid. And because we are looking at a very big chunk of text, I would like it to span across all three of my columns. So I'm going to specify column span equals three, okay? And that means that I will place this element on column zero this time, 
but on row one because I want it to be underneath our logo. And now we can safely save this file with Control S and we can move on to our terminal, press up arrow, enter, and it worked. Cool, we can move on with our browse button. We'll add another comment, this time browse button. So there's two things I would like this button to do. The first one is obviously opening a browse dialog box. The second one would be changing the text from browse to loading, depending on the state of my app. To do this, we will store our text in a special variable, which we will call browse text. And this equals to tk.stringvar in camel case. And once we do that, we can specify this variable inside our button widget, okay? So in the next line, we are going to initialize it with browse btn equals tk.button with a capital B. And you guys already know the drill. We start with our root object, and then we are going to set our text variable to browse text. And because I am very OCD, I'm going to also specify a font. And this will be ra Railway again. And once we do that, we can move on with setting our browse text. And we do this just as it sounds. We'll just type browse text dot set. Inside the round brackets, we will just say that the initial text we want is browse. And the only thing left to do is placing this button inside our grid. You already know how to do this. We'll type browse btn.grid. We will place it in column one, which is our center, and on row two, which is right below the instructions, okay? And if you're ready, just save this file and go back to your terminal, up, enter. Awesome, here we see our browse button, but I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of the ugliest apps I've ever seen. We will need to stylize it a bit so it looks acceptable. So what I'm going to tackle is the uneven gaps between my elements um, vertically. And I'm also going to um, change the appearance of my browse button and make it slightly more attractive, okay? So let's close this window and we'll go back to our code. So first we'll account for the uneven gaps and we can simply do this by um, initializing a row span. So we'll just add a row span to our canvas um, widget, and we will set it to three as well because we have um, items on row zero, items on row one, and items on row two. Cool, and now we can tackle the button. So we will just add a few more parameters here. So I would like to set um, a background color to my button, which will equal to BG, and I will set it to the turquoise um, color you see inside our logo, so that would be uh, 20 BB. I will also like to change the font color to white, and we can do this with FG equals white. And I also would like to enlarge this button, so I'll give it a height value uh, of 2, and I'll give it a width value of, let's say, 15. Hope it looks good. We will save it, and we will rerun our app again, and our button looks much, much nicer. So the only thing I would like to add here is a little bit of a margin uh, between our browse button and the end of our app. Okay, so let's close this window. And th there are a few ways to do this, but I'll just do it the lazy way. I'm going to copy our canvas uh, variable and the grid command from underneath, and I'm going to paste it in the very end of our window. So the only changes I apply to this code is switching this to 250 instead of 300 and deleting the row span. And now if we save this, we rerun the cell, so, sorry, rerun the app. I'm used to use uh, notebooks. Awesome, so now it looks more like a traditional app, but it still doesn't have any functionality because if we press on the browse button, nothing happens. And that's because we did not connect a command that's associated with our button press event. Hope it makes sense. And that's what we're going to do in the next step. So let's close this window and go back to our code. And we can do this with the help of a function. So what we're going to do is create a brand new function. So def, and we'll call it open file. Okay. 
And first, I'm going to check if our function works. So I will print, is this working? And we can attach this function to our button widget by typing command equals lambda open file and that should do the work. So let's save this file once again and rerun it inside our terminal. And now when we click on browse, we can see that we have, um, we have a print statement inside our terminal. And if you wanna make sure that it works again, you can keep pressing it more and more times. And once we figured that out, let's modify our function and go back to our code. So let's close this window, back to Atom, and the first thing I'm going to do inside this function is change my button text from browse to loading. So let's just select this print statement and we'll type browse text dot set. And we will type here loading three dots. And now we can safely open our browse dialog window, but we will need the help of an extra function to do that. So we'll go back to our imports and we are going to import uh, from Kinter dot file dialog import ask open file and back in our function we are going to create a new variable for our file we'll call it file and we'll set it to ask open file and the first parameter is going to be um, the parent which is our root window the second parameter is going to be our mode which we'll set to RB, read only. We will set the title to choose a file. And we will set the file type to equal to um, square brackets, round brackets, PDF file. And the second part of our tuple is going to be the PDF extension, which we'll write with asterisk dot PDF. And then if we indeed selected a file, we can type if file equals equals uh, true, or if file, um, we are going to print that file was successfully loaded. Okay, and let's rerun our app. We will browse for a file on our computer. And I'm going to select the test files that I've created. So let's do a uh, test file number one. And we can see that our print statement occurred. Now let's store this file inside a variable. We are going to type, we're going to delete this print statement. And instead of it, we'll type read PDF. And this will equal to pi PDF2 dot PDF file reader in camel case. And inside the round brackets, we just specify our file. And if we're already here, let's also extract the first page of our PDF with uh, page equals read PDF dot get page. And we would like the first page, so we'll type zero. And now we can extract all the text content of our page with page dot extract text with a capital T. And we're going to assign it to a variable um, called page content and let's check if it worked by printing this page content um, inside our terminal so print page content let's save it and rerun our app let's browse our computer select the PDF file and we can see that we have some text here. So I need to extract all the text from this file, but blah, 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 blah. And if you open the file on your end, you will see that it's an exact match. So great success, but our user is not gonna look at the terminal. Our user is going to look at the app. So we will need to display this text on the app, okay? So what we're going to do is store the page content inside a text widget, which is slightly different from a label widget. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will, um, I will create a new comment saying text box, and I'm going to create a new variable, as usual, text box. Okay, and I will set it to tk.text with a capital T. The first parameter is root, as usual. 
Um, and here I'm going to set height and width to my box. Um, and the height would be 10 lines of text and the width would be um, 50 characters, I believe. And I'm also going to add some padding. So pad X equals, let's say 15 and pad Y equals 15, okay? And this will initialize my text box. But this text box doesn't have any content yet. We will need to insert our content into it. So we'll just type text box dot insert. And inside the round brackets, the first parameter is 1.0, a floating point. And the second parameter is our page content variable. And if we would like to display it on the page, we will need to place it inside our grid. And we can do this with text box dot grid. But this time we will place it um, on column one and on row three. So it's gonna be right underneath our browse button. Okay, so let's save it. And let's rerun our app. And let's select our file again. Perfect, and you can see that our text is now appearing inside the app rather than inside our terminal. And actually, the more I look at it, the more I wanna justify the text to the center. So let's do that. We'll just go back to our code and we will go back to our text box and right underneath the insert command, we will type text box once again, but this time we will type tag configure. And here the parameters would be center as well as justify center. But there's more, okay? On the next line, we will type text box once again, tag add, and inside these round brackets, we will write center again, and we will write 1.0 again. And lastly, we are going to type the string and that's pretty much it. That should do the work. So let's save the file, let's rerun uh, our app, Let's browse again, let's select our test file, and our text is justified to the center. And the last thing we'll need to do is set our loading text back to browse and then our app works like a charm. So let's just close it. Let's go back to our open file function and in the very end of it, we will type browse text dot set browse, okay? So I believe our app is finished and let's run it again and we'll test it across both our test files. So let's uh, hit on browse. Let's select our first test file. Works like a charm. Let's hit browse again. Select our second test file. Perfect. Awesome. Now you guys know how to build your own GUI. Congratulations. But this is not really the end of this project. I'm actually planning to build it up in the next few lessons and to add some more functionality to it. So the end goal will be a PDF extract software that is not only extracting text, but also images. And it also has the ability to save those images on your computer. So if you guys wanna give it a try on your own, you can definitely do that. But I must warn you, it's much more difficult than it sounds. So if you guys wanna see more of these type of videos, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I always appreciate your feedback and your support. It's just amazing to me that so many people around the world care about what I have to say. I never imagined that I'll be in this type of situation. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are amazing. And hopefully I'll get to see you here next week. And until then, have a happy Halloween. And yeah, bye-bye.